XML is often used to transfer information between different platforms, databases, operating systems, and applications. Using MS Access, you can create three types of XML file formats that are used to complement each other in giving a total description of a data source. XML contains just the data in the data source. It is an easy to read text file. XSD contains the schema for a data set. It contains information about the structure of data in the XML file. XSL can serve as a style sheet for the XML file or it can be used to transform data in the XML file. Open customers table and apply a filter to show only records where ID less than 21. Right click on customers table, click on export, select XML file from the shortcut menu or in external data tab, click on XML file. Export XML file dialog box appears. The file name box is populated with a file name and location. You can change the location and file name by clicking on browse. Click on OK. Export XML dialog box appears. Click on More Options for specifying advanced options for the XML export process. On the Data tab, you can choose to export all records, apply existing filter, or the current record. If you previously defined relationships between tables, you could choose whether to export data from related tables as well. Click on the plus sign next to any table name to see the name of any related table. Select any table to include that table in your export. Select the table orders. If you are exporting data to later import into a different database, the owner may supply a transform file. The transforms button allows you to choose from any custom XML transforms that you may have written or acquired. Likewise, if you need to use a special encoding for the database, you can choose one from the encoding drop-down list. A schema file is needed for complex XML to be understood by other applications. When you select Export Schema, Access produces a schema file for data exported to XML format. Choose whether to include or ignore primary key and index information. Choose whether to export all table and field properties. Select export location. Embed schema in exported XML data document adds the schema to the XML document. Select create separate schema document. If you want, you can change the name and location of the document. In most cases, the XML presentation file is not needed as the application that uses the XML file displays the data as required by its users. Notice that none of the options on this tab is selected by default. You can choose options for defining an XSL file. Select Export Presentation. Select Client HTML, which can be read by any web browser. If you plan to put the XSL file on a web server that supports active server pages, you can choose the Server ASP option instead. If the data you export includes report images, you can choose to export those images or you can ignore them. Selecting to export a presentation file generates two files. One is an .xsl file, which includes all the XSLT code needed to define how the data is presented. The second file is an .htm file. When you finish making your selections, click on OK button. Export is complete and Save Import Steps dialog box appears. You can save the details of the operation for future use. Click on Close.
you can see that four files are created customers.xml, customers.xsd, customers.htm and customers.xsl. Open customers.xml. The first two lines of the text file define the version of XML that was used and the schema. The exported data and structure start on the third line. XML is a hierarchy of tags that define the structure of the data and each piece of data is within an opening and closing tag. Each record begins with a tag for the name of the table. In this example, customers is the tag that defines the table. A few lines down, there is a closing tag slash customers signifying the end of the record. In between these two tags are the fields and data for that record. The first field of the first record is recorded as ID1. An application that understands XML will interpret that line to mean there is a field named ID and this record has data value 1 in that field. The next line has field name company and a value company A. Orders, which is the related table, is also included. The two tables were related through the ID field in customers and customer ID field in orders. The records in orders with customer ID value 1 are included inside this tag. This hierarchy of tags and data continues for each field in the record and for each record in the table. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel.